Hi guys. I am just setting up so that I have everything that I want to go over today, but I'm really talking to you guys about progress. It's something I've been thinking about a lot lately, and I figured I could give you guys some of the strategies and tips that I've been using to try and find progress in all the types of areas that you possibly can and why that's important. If you're in this group, it's probably safe to say that you want to see progress in some capacity. And generally, most of us are looking for progress in those ways that are the most glamorized. So it can be seeing progress on the scale or seeing progress in the mirror. So those are generally the places where most of us are going to be looking for progress. Uh, it's where we stock most of our chips. Like that's where we think, you know, the happiness is going to be. That's where all of our problems are going to be solved. And it can really sometimes create this tunnel vision that keeps you from seeing all the other ways that you're making progress. And finding all of the other places that you're making progress is actually a skill within itself. And it's something that all of us can get better at in every single area of our lives. And I know that we drill this all the time that um, we drill at home saying that finding progress is beyond the scale and it's beyond the mirror. And I can totally relate to actually how that within itself is kind of frustrating because I really do want to see the scale move or I really do want to look different in the mirror. Uh, and the reason why I want to focus on as many markers of progress as possible is because moving forward in anything, especially in nutrition, takes a lot of hard work, it takes a lot of time, a lot of discipline, and finding wins along the way is going to keep you motivated and be a guide to show you what is working, what's not working, and it also gives you the opportunity to not be so hard on yourself. So if you're only looking at the scale or how you look in the mirror, then you can be missing, you know, maybe you're you are getting progress in one particular area or you're trying to build a specific habit and it's not actually working and it's not getting you the results that you're looking for. So while those things might be your ultimate goal that you're heading for at the end, um, it's really important to be able to find progress in other ways. And today I'm going to talk about how you can do that and um, how that's affected me. And the amazing thing too is that Finding wins along the way, being happy, staying motivated, and continuing to work hard is what's ultimately going to lead to the scale moving and making progress in the way that you look in the mirror. So it really is a win-win in both situations. While you really want to see the scale move, it's not moving as fast as you want it to, and you stay hyper-focused on that particular marker of progress and miss the rest, you can get demotivated. You can not want to be putting in all that work. You're like, why am I working so hard? If I'm not seeing the scale move, like it's not even worth it. Well, if you see all the ways that your life is improving and all of the other places that you're getting better at things and you're making progress, then it can keep you in the game. And if you're in the game, that's the only way that you're going to see the achieve that ultimate goal at the end. And I know that's a lot easier said than done. So I'm going to give a little metaphor for um, how I this has like helped me think about it in a different way. So. Imagine that you only have one glass of water, and this is like the scale glass of water. In this glass of water, it's the progress on the scale. If this is the only place for me to get any drink, then ultimately, uh, if that glass breaks, I'm not going to have any water and I'm going to be thirsty. Now imagine I had six or seven or 10 different glasses of water. If one of the glasses of water breaks, I have so many other options for where I can get my drinks from and I'm never going to go thirsty. And this is like a great metaphor for why it's important to have so many different markers of progress and it's exactly that way. Now, it's really hard actually to find progress and I want you guys to become your own little detectives in uh, finding having this ability to find ways that you're actually crushing it right now and you might not even notice it it's really hard to notice in yourself so that's why um, I want to talk about a surefire way that you're going to be able to find uh, markers of progress and it might be a little bit counterintuitive but I think I'm a really great example of 
I've been doing this for 12 years. So when I, for those of you that don't know, when I was 16 years old, I was almost 200 pounds and I was in a really, really dark place. I used food to cope with my emotions. I felt like I had lots of social anxiety. I felt like I didn't fit in. And instead of talking about it or instead of finding, you know, effective and healthy ways to manage those emotions, I turned to food. I did things that you know, I'm super shameful of now. Like I used to hide wrappers and in, in pillows in my room. I used to find all these different ways that I could get away with eating whatever I wanted. And that was 12 years ago. And when I decided to make the change, um, for the first nine weeks, I didn't lose a single pound. And I was doing all of this work and I was trying so hard and I didn't lose any weight at all. Um, once I started to, you know, see that just working hard and ways being consistent or continuing to go to the gym or eating more vegetables, like all these ways that I was changing my life. And I started getting excited about those things. That's when I really did start to see progress. And it's exactly what's helped me maintain that progress still 12 years later. I still go up and down. I have moments where I, I'm so judgmental of myself. I'm super critical. And I spend a lot of time focusing on how I'm not getting the things that I want instead of focusing on the ways that I'm working towards that. And nobody can tell you when you're going to achieve that final and ultimate goal that you're looking for, but I can tell you that there are lots of little steps along the way. So one of the easiest ways to start finding little areas where you're making progress is to start with the end in mind. So what I mean by this is where do you want to be? And it's hard to find progress if we don't know the direction that we're heading. Like, what are we actually making progress towards? And this is different than what is your goal. So maybe your goal is to lose 50 pounds, or maybe your goal is to um, compete in a particular competition or look amazing for your wedding. Whatever your goal is, that's amazing. And that's a super great motivator. But what I'm talking about is who do you want to be at the end of that? And what does your life look like? at the end of that. And that needs to be as descriptive as possible. So I actually did this exercise myself before I came on the Facebook Live so that I could talk about it and use myself as an example. And when I say, who do you want to be and what do you want your life to look like? A couple questions that you can ask yourself is, what do I want my life to look like? What do I want my relationships to look like? How do I want to feel about myself? What is my relationship with food? What does my fitness look like? And what kind of person do I want to be? And having these answers can really help you assess if your current behaviors are aligning with where you want to go and where you want to be. And if it's not, which not everybody has all of their behaviors aligning towards exactly where you want to be and what you want your life to look like. That's why we're here. That's why we're trying to improve. And we're probably going to be on this constant journey of, you know, refining bad habits and implementing new ones. So what you, what you can do is you can start with the end in mind and then you can work backwards and you'll be able to see the behaviors that are not necessarily aligned with where you want to be. That's where you need to make progress. And that's where you can start tracking it. And the key is that when you're making this where you want to be, it can't be anything that is outside of your control. So the scale, partially outside of your control. Um, how you look in the mirror, partially outside of your control. Um, qualifying for a particular competition, also partially outside of your control. So we wanna make sure that this vision, I'll use the word vision, this vision that you're creating for yourself is as much in your control as possible. So I actually did this exercise, so I'm gonna use um, myself as an example. And this is something that I constantly do. I revisit it. Um, my husband and I, Michael and I, we do something like called a, we call it a vision and goals. And we reassess every, I don't know, six months, one year, whenever we're feeling up to it, exactly like where we imagine ourselves in two years and get as descriptive as humanly possible. So revisiting it and changing it, it actually gets, gets you super motivated about your life in general and where your whole life can be. And that can ultimately uh, lead you to be more excited about all of the areas of progress instead of being so focused on maybe one or two that are the particular ones that you're super focused on. Um, so where I'm at right now, so what I wrote down was that 
I want my best self, this version of myself, like the life that I'm heading towards is a life where I move 30 minutes every single day. And not only do I move 30 minutes every single day, I want to enjoy the movement that I'm doing. And I don't want to feel like it's a burden or a chore. Often I felt like, you know, exercise is a burden or it's a chore to me and it's something that I just have to do and I don't want to feel like that. I want to feel like I'm excited and grateful to be able to move every single day. Uh, I want to have strong and deep relationships where I show up for my friends. I'm respectful and they return that same respect to me. I want to have pride in my efforts and my attitude and my habits. I want to get better at noticing it and celebrating it. I want to manage stress effectively and continue to be respectful and caring even when I'm in more difficult situations. So if I'm like super stressed, sometimes I can, you know, I can either lash out or I can not um, take other people's emotions into account or uh, be, I won't be as respectful as I really ultimately want to be. Um, when it comes to my food, I want to enjoy my food because it fuels me. I also want to use strategies other than food to soothe my emotions. A lot of times if I'm sad or if I'm stressed out, I will definitely use food to soothe my emotions and make me feel better. Um, my ultimate self, the way my life looks when I, you know, at the end of this program or when I reach my ultimate um vision is I look at food because it fuels me and I don't use it to cope with my emotions. Um, I also uh, think about my decisions, my food decisions before I make them. I don't just, you know, grab the most convenient. I don't just grab the most delicious. I make decisions based on, you know, how, how it's going to make me feel ne like tomorrow, not in the moment. Um, what I want most, like being healthy, what's best for my health, um, the quality of my food choices. This is like my vision for myself. This is not something I do every single day right now. Um, I also want to cook different recipes. I want to eat at home more often than I eat out. That sometimes can get out of whack when I'm traveling, but I want to cook my own food and I want to eat um, at home more often than I eat out. And I want to have a lot of gratitude for my meals. I also want to take care of myself in terms of my hygiene and I want to feel comfortable in my own skin. So this is like this vision that I've created for myself, how I want my life to look like, how I want my relationships to look like, how I want my food to, like my relationship with food to look like, um, as well as the way that I feel about myself. Um, this is like my ultimate vision for myself. And now knowing how I want these things to be in the future, I can work backwards and think about the habits and mindset shifts that I would need to have in place to make this happen. And now that is where I'm going to find all of my markers of progress. So for example, I said I wanted to manage stress effectively and be respectful even in difficult times. So how am I going to be able to turn that into a marker of progress? Well, if I notice myself in a stressful situation and how I handle it, my best self, you know, takes implements the strategy of taking five deep breaths with a uh, twice as long exhale before I respond or react to something. Um, that is progress. And if I handle it that way, that is me making progress. If I don't handle it that way, I can tell that that's something I still need to continue working on. Not just focusing on, you know, I want to lose five pounds or I want to look a certain way in the mirror. And these are things, you know, the happier I am, the less stressed I am, and the nicer I am to people around me, that ultimately makes it easier for me to achieve those other goals. So remember, it's a win-win. So focusing on these steps along the way and that progress is ultimately going to get you not just those goals that you want to, but it's going to, ha you're going to end up, if anything, at this life, like that vision that I just created for myself. I would love to be that every single day of my life. Um, and I'm definitely working towards making that happen. So ultimately, that is going to be a win in either, in either direction. So another example is that I mentioned wanting to cook at home more than eating out. So every meal that I cook at home is progress. You know, that's something to celebrate. Even if I still eat out more often than I eat at home, every time I make a meal for myself at home, um, that's definitely something to celebrate. And it's something to acknowledge and be proud of and notice that I'm making progress in the direction of that goal. So what I do right now to head towards cooking more meals at home is every single Sunday, I do a small 20 minute search of healthy recipes online and I pick three recipes that I'm going to cook at home 
each each like throughout the week. So I know there's a couple nights a week that Michael and I eat out or we don't eat out, we don't eat together. So I pick, you know, the three meals that we're going to be together and it gives me an opportunity to um, get excited about my food, be grateful for it. I think sometimes when you cook your own food, it's just like, it's just more delicious sometimes. <laughs> like you put the time and effort to make it. So um, I'm definitely making progress towards that goal. And that's something that I'm like, really proud of and it helps me stay motivated and continue you know not just give in to being like oh why am i working so hard i want to just eat this cookie like why am i trying so hard to resist it i might as well just eat it because it feels so good in the moment and you can even take this marker of progress one level deeper so yeah i'm cooking three meals a day and i'm definitely making more progress towards cooking more meals at home than eating out but on an even deeper level Another layer of progress that I could focus on is the fact that I'm taking time out of my week to make it so that I can cook meals. So that's making it helping me manage stress. So it's also helping me manage the stress more effectively and it's helping me eat more, more meals at home as compared to eating more meals, um, eating out at restaurants. So just scheduling that time or making that time on Sundays to go over a bunch of recipes and have two or three recipes that I'm gonna make for the week that um, is progress within itself. Like that is something to celebrate and something to be really excited for. And from that vision that I just gave you guys of this, the way I want my life to be, how I imagine that my, the best version of myself, I can pull probably 30 or 40 different areas that I'm making progress. Eating more food at home, moving 30 minutes a day, managing stress better by taking deep breaths, um, having deeper relationships, spending more time with my friends, um, checking in with my coach, like whatever it is, like however you envision yourself to be, there's so many different areas of progress that should be celebrated. And that is going to keep you motivated along the way because that ultimate goal, the wedding that you're trying to get, um, get in shape for, or the, you know, the competition that you're trying to qualify for, or the weight that you're trying to lose, that is really exciting and it's very motivating, but the motiva motivation for something like that starts to wane because you realize it's, sometimes you realize it's farther than you might think it is. And that starts demotivating you. Um, and that can sometimes get frustrating and you can sometimes not be as connected to the ultimate goal that you're heading towards and that can be really frustrating. So staying in the moment and present to all of the things you need to do on the way to getting towards that goal and what your life looks like is um, really going to be uh, helpful in keeping you on track and ultimately, hopefully, achieving all of those goals that you want. And if not, at least you've created this amazing life for yourself where you have so many habits put in place where you feel amazing about yourself, you have a positive relationship with food, and you're being a, a positive force in all of the relationships in your life. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to create a vision for yourself. So the questions I want you to ask yourself, there's four questions. I want you to ask yourself, what do you want your life to look like? And I want you to ask yourself, what do you want the relationships in your life to look like? How do you want to see yourself? That can include how do you want to speak to yourself? How do you want to feel about yourself? And how do you want the way you see food? What do you want your relationship with food to be like? So that's what your life look like, your relationships, your relationship with yourself, and the relationship with food. And I want you to answer those questions as if you could ma you could wave a magic wand and your life would be that way. Like this is like you're putting a spell on your life and this is the exact way that you want your life to be. And be as descriptive as possible, making sure that all of them are within your control. So it can't be anything like I, I have, you know, I'm making $500,000 a year or something, you know, that's completely outside of your control. It has to be things that you know that you can work towards. From there, you're going to work backwards and think about all the habits and the mindset shifts that you need to make to make that happen. To make that life come to fruition, you know all the things that you need to put in place to make that happen. And then you can monitor those behaviors along the way. The most important thing of all of it is that 
Most of us spend a lot of our time in criticism and blame and judging and being upset and being sad that we're not making the exact progress that we want to make. The most important thing is that when you're noticing this progress is you have to celebrate it. And celebrating it can be as grand or as tiny as you want it to be. So that maybe that's sharing your wins with your coach. Maybe that's sharing it with your friends, sharing it with your family. It could be sharing it in this group. Or, you know, on the most basic level, it can just be laying in bed or looking at yourself in the mirror and just telling yourself that you're proud of yourself or laying in bed, having your hand over your heart, you know, saying, I'm proud of myself. I'm acknowledging myself for doing all this work, for putting all these habits in place and really genuinely being descriptive and telling yourself what you're proud of yourself for. Uh, it might seem cheesy, but it really does go a long way, and I really think that it can absolutely change your life. I think I'm a walking, talking example of how this kind of thing can not only help you make progress and achieve lots of goals, but it can help you continue on that journey, make new goals, bigger, better goals, and ultimately um, live the kind of life that makes you happy, and that's what we're all after. Um, it's not gonna be easy, but I hope that uh, you do take the time to do this exercise, um, create a vision for yourself, work backwards, uh, and if you have any questions, post them in the comments, or if you have any habits or behaviors that you're going to be monitoring from now moving forwards, then uh, I would love to hear them. So let me know, and I love you guys, and I hope that this was helpful. And I know you're all making progress in so many more ways than you even notice.